Hello and welcome to this video on rationalising the denominator. Now let's just suppose that we had root 3 and then we added root 3 over the 2. Well we could see this as root 3 plus, well if we're dividing root 3 by 2, that's the same as saying you have half of root 3. So if you have one lot of root 3 and you added half a lot of root 3, then you have one and a half lots of root 3, or you could say 3 over 2 lots of root 3. So in this particular case, it was quite easy to add these two thirds together when that third was over a whole number. But if we had, say, root 3 plus 2 over root 3, we can't collect them in the same way now because we can't use that same trick of moving the sort of 2 outside the fraction so we have something root 3. We can't do the same thing here. And also, it kind of sort of makes sense to say that we're dividing something into two pieces, but it makes less sense to say that we're sort of dividing something into root 3 pieces. It just doesn't feel right, does it? So we don't want the denominator to be a third. And to turn the denominator into something which is not a third is known as rationalising the denominator. The reason it's called rationalising, by the way, is because we don't consider thirds to be something called rational. A rational number is one that can be expressed as a fraction involving integers. Now, it's not possible to write, say, root 2 as a fraction involving integers. You can't actually do it. And there's a nice proof for it, which we won't cover in this video. So thirds are known as irrational because they're not rational. And therefore, to rationalise the denominator means to turn the denominator into something which is rational, i.e. either fraction or some kind of whole number which doesn't involve thirds. So how do we do it? Well, if we had this first question, say, 6 over root 2, we don't want that third in the denominator. We want to rationalise the denominator. And the trick is to times top and bottom of the fraction by root 2. If we times top and bottom the fraction by the same amount, we're not actually changing this value, are we? Just as if you had, say, a half and you times the top and bottom of the fraction by 3, you get 3 over 6. It doesn't change the value, does it? But the reason why this works well is because then in the denominator we have root 2 times root 2, which is just 2. And now it's no longer third, we have rationalised the denominator because it doesn't have a third. And 6 times root 2 is just 6 root 2. And we could actually simplify this. If we had 6 lots of root 2 and we divided it by 2, we now have 3 lots of root 2. Let's just do another one like that. If we had 12 divided by root 3, what do we need to times the top and bottom by to rationalise the denominator? Well, we times top and bottom by root 3. And if we do that, the top is now 12 root 3, and the bottom is now root 3 times root 3, which is 3. And then if we have 12 lots of root 3 and we divide it by 3, we have 4 lots of root 3. Let's try some of these other questions. We've got question 2, 1 over 3 root 3. Well, whatever third we have at the bottom, we times top and bottom by that. So we times top and bottom by root 3. We don't need to times by the 3 as well, just whatever third we have there. So then the top becomes 1 times root 3, which is root 3. And the bottom becomes, well, we know root 3 times root 3 is 3, but we still go times by that 3, so we get 9. So we've now got root 3 over 9, and we've rationalised the denominator because the denominator is no longer a third. What about question 3? We've got 6 over root 8. We timed top and bottom by whatever third we have there, so by root 8 over root 8. So the top is now 6 root 8, and the denominator is root 8 times root 8, which is 8. Now, can we simplify this? Well, we know that root 8 can be simplified as a third. Root 8 could be written as root 4, root 2. Remember that we find the biggest square number that goes into 8, which is 4. So let's simplify this further. Well, 6 times root 4 is 6 times 2, so it's 12 root 2 over 8. And we could simplify this fraction by dividing top and bottom by whatever's common. So the 12 and the 8, they both divide by 4, so we could get... 3 root 2 over 2, and that's the simplest you can get the result. Now 4 is getting more complicated because we've now got multiple things in the denominator. So we've got 5 over root 5 minus 2. 
Now you might think we can just multiply top and bottom by root 5, but that doesn't work. What we need to multiply by is, well whatever that expression is, you just change the minus for a plus, or if it's a plus, you change the plus for a minus. So we're going to multiply by root 5 plus 2. So root 5 plus 2, and I'll show you why it works in a second. Whether well, we multiply the bottom by, we're going to also multiply the top by. And we're going to see that this magically works. So we've got five lots of root 5 plus 2. So in the numerator, we've got 5 root 5. And we've got 5 times 2, which is 10. You could think of these as having brackets, by the way. So expanding this bracket, 5 times root 5 plus 2. And if we put brackets around this as well, let's multiply out these brackets. We've got root 5 times root 5, which is 5. We've got root 5 times 2, which is plus 2 root 5. We've got minus 2 times root 5, which is minus 2 root 5. And we've got minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4. Now, this is where the magic happens. Can you see you've got 2 root 5 minus 2 root 5? They cancel, so our surdy things in the denominator have disappeared. And we could simplify further because 5 minus 4 is 1. So we just have 5 root 5 plus 10 over 1. And when we have over 1, we don't need that, so it's just 5 root 5 plus 10. Now, why did this trick work? The reason it worked is that if you have, say, a minus b times a plus b, and you expand that out it would eventually simplify to a squared minus b squared because the ab and the minus ab term will cancel out. Now, can you see that whatever you have, the a and the b, they each get squared. So it means when you times this by this, 1 minus 1 plus, just like you have here, both the root 5 and the 2 are going to get squared. So when the root 5 is squared, it becomes 5 and it's no longer a third. That's why it works. Let's do some more of these. So we've got question 5, 6 over root 3 plus 1. So just as we had before, we times by whatever the denominator is, we replace that plus with a minus. We change the sign. So we're going to times by root 3 minus 1. Make sure you preserve the order. So if the root 3 is first here, the root 3 is first here. And whatever we times the denominator by, we need to times the numerator by. So it's root 3 minus 1 again. And let's put brackets around this and this as well. It just makes it easy to see how we expand out. So we've got 6 times root 3 minus 1, which is 6 root 3. And 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. And then the denominator, we've got root 3 times root 3, which is 3. We'll have minus root 3, but we'll have plus root 3 as well. So they will cancel. And finally, we've got plus 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. And the quick way, by the way, to expand this out is remember that when we had a plus b times a minus b, that expanded out to a squared minus b squared. So we can do that squared minus that squared. So it's root 3 squared, which is 3, minus 1 squared, which is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So we have 6 root 3 minus 6 at the top. Now, we can divide each of these things by 2. So 6 root 3 divided by 2 is 3 root 3. And minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3, so it simplifies to that. What about question 6? We've got 1 plus root 2 over 3 plus root 8. So just as we did before, we're going to multiply it by 3 minus root 8, so we change the sign. And therefore we're going to also multiply the top, the numerator, by 3 minus root 8. Let's put brackets around everything. Now, we could expand this out in the denominator, but remember my little trick? If you've got the difference of two squares, where you've got the same thing in both cases, but one is plus, one is minus, you can do that squared minus that squared. So it's 3 squared, which is 9, minus root 8 squared, which is 8. So you're going to have 9 minus 8. And what about the numerators? We just need to expand out in the usual way. So we've got 1 times 3, which is 3. 1 times minus root 8, which is minus root 8. We've got root 2 times 3, which is plus 3 root 2. And we've got root 2 times minus root 8, which is minus root 16. Because we've got a third times a third, we just multiply the numbers. Now let's just simplify that a bit. Well, we've got 9 minus 8, which is 1, and it's over 1, so we can just completely ignore the denominator. Now this, we've got 3 minus root 8, we could write as root 4 root 2, which is 2 root 2. We've got plus 3 root 2. And root 16 was just 4, isn't it? So it's minus 4. And then... 
let's collect like terms as such. We've got 3 minus 4, which is minus 1, and minus 2 root 2 plus 3 lots of root 2 is 1 lot of root 2, so it's just plus root 2. Or slightly more cleanly, we could write root 2 minus 1. And by the way, if you have a calculator and you just type that into your calculator, it would actually simplify it to this, so it can do the work for you. What about this final one, 7? Uh, I saw this in a mock paper once, but I've never actually seen something like this in a real paper. So 4 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2. Now, this is a bit of a weird one because we've got a fraction within a fraction. And whenever that happens, I always multiply the top and bottom of the outer fraction by the denominator of the inner fraction. So we're going to multiply top and bottom here by the denominator of the inner fraction, root 2. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by root 2. So the numerator is 4 times root 2, which is 4 root 2. And the bottom is now, well, root 2 times root 2 is 2. And then when we times 1 over root 2 by root 2, the times thing by root 2 cancels out the divided by root 2, so we just get 1. So then it just becomes 4 root 2 over 3. And we've rationalised the denominator. There's no third in the denominator, so we're okay.